Please stand. If you're able, please uh, turn and face the cross as we begin our service this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Continue with our opening hymn number 442.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience, and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 The Old Testament reading for this Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion, is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Therefore he is the mediator of the from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count the quality of God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. 
Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again, Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the Pharisees believed in him, but for fear, I'm sorry, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, for my sermon this morning is a discombobulated day, week, and world. Discombobulated. I like that word. It's kind of fun to say. I think it means confused, mixed up, out of sorts. Um, at the Milwaukee airport, when you're uh, going through security, and you finally get to the other side of it, they have a sign. I don't know if it's in anywhere else. I've seen it in Milwaukee. It says, Recombobulation Area. <laughs> And I think that's a great word, too. Because when I fly, and I'm sure it's the case for many of you, going just through security, I feel a bit discombobulated. You gotta, well, you know how it goes. Take off your shoes, and take off your belt, and take out your wallet, and your keys, and your watch, and do you have anything in your in your carry-on, you're not supposed to, like a computer or something. Oftentimes we're told to put it on the x-ray machine, and the TSA agents are there kind of telling you, you gotta hurry it up. And and, uh, and then for me, because I, I wear an insulin pump, and I'm not supposed to let that get, um, it's not supposed to go through the body scanner thing. I always have to tell them I'd like to have a pat down. So then they tell me to stand to the side, and and meanwhile, the rest of my stuff goes down the conveyor belt. And I'm standing there looking at it, waiting for somebody to come and pat me down and all that kind of good stuff. And finally, when I get to the end of it all and everything is good, I can go to that recombobulation area and put myself all back together again so I can get on the plane and go to wherever I'm going. So I hear you're chuckling, so you probably know all that experience yourself. Well, discombobulated, that's, that's a little bit how I feel about Palm Sunday, or at least the, the, our celebration of Palm Sunday. Um, you may have noticed on the, on the front cover of the bulletin, um, it says Palm Sunday slash Sunday of the Passion. And so there's, there's different ways to celebrate Palm Sunday. There's different themes. And there's uh, long-standing history for this, but you know, the question for me as a pastor, and I've you know I've done it different ways in my time as a pastor, is what what do you focus on today? Because obviously you can only focus on so much. Is the emphasis on Palm Sunday, Jesus riding into Jerusalem? This what well, was that morning, anyways, or that day of kind of a a day of celebration and victory. You know, the, the crowds are lining the road into Jerusalem. They're, they're waving their palm branches. They're singing, they're celebrating. Hosanna, which means save us now. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. It's a good day. I was mentioning in Bible class this morning, it, Perhaps it's kind of like when you're a sports team, you know, the hometown team wins the World Series or the Super Bowl, wherever it might be, and the people come out to celebrate as the, you know, as the team comes back home and, and revels in the victory that they won. That's maybe, or maybe, maybe when our, you know, in times gone by, when our soldiers would return from war and they'd have those ticker tape parades and celebrate the victory that they had won overseas. This was kind of Palm Sunday. So do you focus on that? Or do you focus on the Sunday of the Passion? Do you remember why Jesus went to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday? And yes, it was a glorious day, but he was riding into Jerusalem to die. And so therefore, in in, in some churches, and I've done this myself, maybe you, you have churches that you've attended in the past have done too, you often on this Sunday you read the entire Passion narrative. 
be up to two chapters long. Sometimes there's different readers. I don't know if you've experienced this. There's one person is Jesus, and one person is, is Peter, and one person is Pilate, one person, you know, if you read the entire account, which can take you know quite a while to do. And I've wrestled with how best to, to do this. So we have what we have today, which is another option that was given to us in our liturgical books, that we continue the reading from John chapter 12 for the gospel lesson. But again, I don't know. I don't know what's right. I don't know if there is a right. Most Sundays, you know, just do what I do and it all feels good. But this day, I just, I always feel a little bit, to use that word, discombobulated. But maybe that's okay. Because it was a discombobulated day of sorts. It was a day of victory and celebration. And yet, Jesus was coming to Jerusalem to die. And a few days later, after he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the cheers of the people would change. Instead of Hosanna, save us, it was crucify him. On Sunday, they acclaimed him a king. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And yet on Friday, they're making fun of him. Oh, he's a king, huh? Let's put a crown of thorns on his head, and a purple robe on his back, and a, a reed in his hand. And the soldiers were bowing down and mocking him. They put the sign on the cross. This is the king of the Jews. But they didn't believe it. Discombobulated, right? Can you imagine being one of the disciples? I mean, now, in fairness, Jesus had told them many times what was going to happen to him. That he would be he would be betrayed and, and arrested and he would suffer and he'd be put to death, and on the third day he would rise. And yet the disciples were just like us. You know, imperfect, frail human beings. And I can only imagine what was going through their mind. Because on you know, just prior to his coming into Jerusalem, he brought, as we heard last week, he brought Lazarus back to life. A great miracle foreshadowing his own resurrection. And now on Palm Sunday, the crowds are celebrating and cheering for him. But then on Friday, he's beaten and mocked nailed to a cross, and he dies, and he's buried? That doesn't make any sense. Talk about feeling all out of sorts. It's no wonder that they were scared and they hid, as we heard we'll hear um, come up with Easter. And yet Jesus could appear to them and comfort them and encourage them and send them forth to proclaim his resurrection to the world. So yeah, a discombobulated day, a discombobulated week. We live in a discombobulated world. Yesterday, Tabitha and I, we did some hiking. As you know, we've been doing that around town. This was actually like an hour and a half away, um, often uh, by global. We did some hiking, we saw these beautiful wildflowers. I had no idea the desert was so beautiful. Although I know it's, we've had a lot of rain and, and pretty soon it's going to get hot and all those pretty wildflowers will be dried up and you know stubble and so forth. But right now it's just beautiful. I mean the sky is like today beautiful, crystal clear blue of skies. And yet we heard about over the weekend and last week these terrible tornadoes that hit other parts of our country, you know, Mississippi and in the Midwest and Arkansas. People just like us going about their day, and all of a sudden, this storm comes through and just upends their life if it doesn't take their life altogether. And if that's not bad enough, there's all this political upheaval going on. And I'm not going to get into all that from the pulpit, but it seems like we can't get a break. It's just from one crisis or scandal or new story to the next. It used to be you'd have an election, somebody would win, and then the people would take a break, and then be some governing, and then and then you, you know, ramp up to the next election, but now there's no break. As soon as one is over, they're litigating the old one, and they're looking forward to the new one. 
There's banking crisis and scandal and problems and up. You go on and on and on. It doesn't make sense. It's out of sorts. This combined. And yet, just, I don't know if this is the best analogy, but I'm going to try it. Just like when you get through that security mess, and there's that recombobulation area, you can get yourself all put back together and continue on your way. Holy Week doesn't end on Good Friday. Jesus rises again. He's in control. Even when it doesn't seem like he is, he's in control. All this has been worked out and planned from eternity for us. He is that lamb that goes on complaining for it. To suffer and die on the cross is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's why he entered Palm Sunday, or Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He is the king. He's the king who comes to serve, as signified by him riding that lowly donkey into town. He is the king who comes to serve us by giving his life for us on the cross. As he said about himself, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus, the Lamb, is also the Good Shepherd, the one who not only has the authority to lay down his life, but the authority to take his life back up again. As Paul says so beautifully in our epistle lesson for today, Jesus became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, and therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus lives. He won the victory. And when he comes again, he will make all things new. And the craziness and turmoil of this world will be no more. But until then, as we live in this kind of messed up, discombobulated world, we can go forth with hope and confidence that Jesus is with us, that he who rose from the dead Easter morning to, to win our salvation, that he comes among us even now as he promises. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He says, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And so he'll travel with us and strengthen us and encourage us with his word and sacrament. Help us through all the chances and, and changes of this mortal life. Until that day when he comes again to make all things new. And we won't have to worry about all this craziness anymore. But rejoice and celebrate with him, with all the saints and angels, in the glory and bliss and peace of heaven that is to come. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we continue with our offertory. King of glory, Lord of hosts, 
Lift up the gates of our hearts and make way for your blessed Son. Forgive our sins and renew our souls, that we may glorify him who died to save us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we desire not the death of any sinner, but that all would turn in repentance to you. Bless the preaching of your gospel and the administration of your sacraments in mission fields around the world. Convert those who do not yet know Christ, and sustain those who face danger and opposition for the name of Christ. Bless and protect all missionaries as they proclaim Christ boldly in hostile places, and surround their families with your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sacrificed your own Son on the cross, that we may be called your children. Increase the faith of all Christian fathers and mothers, that receiving Jesus and trusting in his atoning sacrifice, they may be enlivened to sacrificial love for their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, our King, your Son entered Jerusalem as the true ruler, ready to lay down his life for his people. Grant this same mind to those in authority over us, that they would discharge their duty even for the least among us, and so receive your commendation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your gracious will, O Lord, look on all who suffer illness or physical disability. Bless them with what is best for them, according to your good and gracious will, and strengthen their faith. Open our hearts to serve their bodily needs. Take into your care those who mourn the death of loved ones. Give them peace and comfort through your holy word. We pray especially today for Carol, Dorothy, Bev, Nora, Lila, Jean, Vivian, Cheryl, Dennis, Bill, and Albert. We pray also for Walter Luzinski, who is hospitalized, and also for peace and comfort for Verna Hola and her family as they mourn Ted's death, and for all those whom we name quietly in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Eternal Lord, as your Son once entered humbly into Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, so send him to us according to his promise in the Holy Sacrament, that we may eat his body and drink his blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of our sins and in the unity of a true confession. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna. Save us now in the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. That we should at all times and all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again. And that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven 
heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting, depart in peace. Amen.
Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Jesus Christ to strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
And now this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please remain standing for our final hymn. 